Hi, this is the Black Creative Handle podcast for creatives and entrepreneurs to survive and to thrive. Okay, so this lovely podcast is about how to create a successful team on a budget to help you all to be successful. How do you do this? And I say this because I am very time poor super super time poor and as a creative or having a small business you think okay how can i maximize my coins and you don't want to spend you don't want to spend and people say like a dollar saved is a dollar earned so i'm like i don't want to spend but i don't have much time and i want to progress to the next level so what people say is true to get places faster you have to write a check so i have to just let it go thinking about my relationship about abundancy or scarcity mindset and i don't want to have a no scarcity mindset it's all about abundance manifest the success and manifest the love manifest all the great things coming to you in my way right now if you can see me on youtube you see my hands pushing that great positive energy to you anyhow I had to realise I can't afford, I'm not at a stage where I can get a full-time person, but I have to use a lot of freelancers to help me to get to where I want to go at this stage in my creative career and business life. So you might be thinking, how do I do this? Because it can be scary as a creative, giving your coins, especially when you don't have much and you think you can do it yourself. You're like, yes, you can do it yourself. What do you want? As I get older, I'm like, I value my time and I actually value money. Bit weird, I like to get the money. But which one I prefer? I rather for paying X amount of, you know, pounds or dollars for a service where I can save some time, I can save half a day and I can use that for something else. Bringing in more money and doing things as a CEO or chief creative person should be doing than doing things which I don't need to do. I hope that makes sense. So for my jewelry business, for my social media work, um, I do use different people from the gig economy. So people might say, what's the gig economy? It's a term which is used to look at people who are freelancers, not hired on an employee contract. Don't really have no employment rights, but you should treat everyone Good, right? <laughs> no matter who they are, if they're here or around the world. And that's what I do. I just go to certain sites, talk to certain people in my network, and like, can you do this project for X amount of pounds? Because I owe dollars. And they say, yeah, these are terms and conditions for that. X amount of hours a week, X amount of flight rate pay, um, pay for a certain criteria of work, what I need to be done. And hey, presto, it gets done. And you think, Sandra, is that easy? No, it's not that easy. So I'm trying to help you to save your coins and make sure you find a really good team, team players to help you when you need to. Because I'm telling you, these gig people, these people who do short-term projects, it's not easy. And it can be a headache. You want to give up. So I'm here to help you. I'm here to give you five tips as a creative, as a business owner, as a person in life who wants to put themselves to the next level and create a team, a floating team. Okay, so the first thing, which I feel that is really important to establish, is your budget. Budget, 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 budget. Because your budget determines the quality of the person who's going to work with you on a short-term basis. And it kind of, not just the budget, it kind of puts it out there, what you got to get. <laughs> the quality of work or so, and also how much bang can you get for your buck. I was just trying to think of a different way of saying it, but, you know, being a bit colloquial, you know, best bang for your buck. How much you can squeeze, squeeze, uh not squeeze out that person, but squeeze out of the amount of the budget we have and to see what products or what quality you get out of it. Now, let me explain. Okay. So say that you want a general virtual assistant to do a bit of admin here and there 
and you get you go on a platform and you pay f for someone who's 15 pounds an hour or 15 dollars an hour let's say dollars 15 dollars an hour and someone is five dollars an hour you went oh i might go five dollars an hour that's a bargain ha 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 wait wait there the reason why i say wait because i've done this before is you might go for the cheap option sometimes there is a catch if you go for the cheap options usually for a normal va that could be in the philippines india somewhere outside of the western um places areas so you can get um, cheaper labor you have to train them which is fine but if you train them that costs you with your time so be paid you know the budget of your time as well if you get someone 15 pound an hour they're usually in a bit higher or above they're usually english speaking countries or they have they you know their country has people who have a high level people who can speak english usually in eastern european or american something like that and you don't have to do as much teaching or much training uh, because of the language barriers and so forth just think about your budget what do you want you can't expect the whole world <laughs> for five dollars or three dollars an hour for a va i tell you that much adjust your expectations and think about your budget about what do you want and what effort you want to put in to get that result what you want so budget 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 and also like the budget how long you want them for mm -hmm. what you expect all that shebang which leads me on to my next thing is about time 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 I say this because you think, oh yeah, I'm paying an employee. Oh, not employee, but sorry, let me scratch that. Not employee. I'm a, employing a person or a virtual person in this economy, economy to do something for me. You think, just, you think, oh, you just give them a diagram or you do your loom video or you do a simple like notes. And you think, just get it, just like that. It's not up to them to just figure it out. You, as a person who's paying for that gig, not paying for that virtual person to do that work, you need to make sure that they understand as quickly as possible. Because you don't, you waste your money <laughs> and you're not going to get what you're going to get and you end up doing it anyway and it's a waste of time and they get frustrated and you get frustrated. So you have to put the time. Think people as like an apprentice. They need that time. When you start a new job, any other job, and you're a full-time employee, you know, first six months, that's where you have probation. They give you six months to get used to the job so you can perform at a certain level. That's where we need to be. So we need to give some people a bit more grace. Either you might use that person or have to have a short-term contract for a short amount of time. So how much work and time you put into the preparation for these roles, what you want. It could be a certain web designer in this gig economy, it could be a graphic designer, it could be a VA, a video editor, a podcast person to help you edit. Whatever it is, put the time in forward. Plan. I'm telling you, it will save you money and time. Okay. So the third point is about trials i believe in it sometimes you just got to spend money to make money sometimes you have to spend money to test things out you know how i feel in the podcast i keep on talking about rapid prototyping you have to fail fast yes i said it you have to fail fast so you put a bit of money aside for a certain task so for instance let me give you an example so i want to do a lead generation activity lead generation i want to find leads i want to find different people i want to contact for future prospects and future money for future projects I want that person to, for my jewellery business, to look at different stockists in, and different showrooms. And these are the type of examples. I'll do a spreadsheet. These are the type of examples. <laughs> Always do an example, show them. This is the type of examples where I want you to look on a spreadsheet. These are the type of people. This is how I want you to do the spreadsheet and come back to me. I give them a, a, a set amount of um, hours or a set amount of context they should um, contacts they should um, put on the spreadsheet for lead generation. Also, what I do through Zoom because they're usually abroad, I show them how to do it. I give them written instructions. 
I show them how to do it. I talk through it. I said, do about five or 10 of these like entries for me. And we'll review back tomorrow or later in the day. We do that just to double check if they've got it or not. There's no part of them giving them like find a hundred and all of the contacts are whack. Or they don't or they don't have proper email addresses or you just you're just wasting your time. And email addresses can be tricky. Sometimes I've used um Rocket Reach. I pay a subscription for that. I don't know how accurate it is. It didn't really super work for me, but sometimes what work you want to find email addresses, in my opinion, in my little life. Uh, I asked the person to go on their Instagram, look on LinkedIn, look at their companies and try to work out the email format for that person. So you have to do a bit more digging to get more accurate. Or you just ask them, like, can I have your email? <laughs> the person who you try to figure out. So that's another story, trying to get the email address. But it's a trial. Do a small project first. Don't give people a big project, expect the world. Because if you do, even if you pay them lots and lots of money on the higher scale of their fees, you need to establish that rapport and relationship with them. So trials are a really good way of finding out what you want, what you don't want, and how you work with people. The third thing, no, sorry, the fourth thing is about your operating or your standard operating procedures, making sure, I think I said it in my last point, is making sure you have everything ready. So you make sure you have the programs, what they want to use. If your Excel sheet, make sure you've got Excel sheets, templates already so they know what to do. Make sure you write exactly what they want to do. Make sure you have quality assurance methods. Make sure what they're doing is right. Also to video it as well. I make sure it's all video. So it's there in the, you know, the G um, folder. Like if you have stuck on a task, here it is. That's how you do it. If any questions, ask me. Seriously, you have to make sure that you have standard operation procedures so people know how they can get the job done. And they really appreciate it because they feel like they're getting training and they can move on to the next job and they feel like they can get as much experience from you for their next job. They can hire up their fees, not hire up the fees for me, but hire up the fees for someone else. So they like getting different variations of work because it hires their price. And they can show that they've got experience and they get a very good testimonial. So it's in their interest for you to provide as much information. The more information you give them in the front end, the quicker they do the work, cheaper for you. And also you can reuse that information for the next person who you hire and so on. And I always try to get two or three people. I know it's, it's time consuming. But two or three people who does the same job with the, the graphic designers or editors or something because these freelancers if they're at a certain price they get booked up quite quick and sometimes you need your stuff like yesterday not today or tomorrow i need my work now so i always try to have a, um, a range of people who can do things in short turnarounds because relying on that one person that person could go on sick or something happened to them and they're just saying no so i always reach you know try to get some people i work with just in case and i uh, anything happens just to safeguard yourself because no one's loyal in these streets, in these gig streets, I tell you that. No one is loyal. <laughs> and they'll find out like the people who you get paid on the lower half, you know, for the outsourcing of this gig um, economy, they're not as loyal. They will just like, in my little experience, they will just go to, the, you know, a higher gig. Once they get to a certain level and get X amount of experience, like six months experience, they'll just go just leave your stuff and go to something else. Uh, sometimes the people that say on certain platforms like Fiverr or Upwork, they do like basic lead generation or basic VA, they do as a stepping stone to, for digital marketing and then they want to get into SEO and things that pay more. So they see it as a stepping, job, um, stepping stone job. So make sure that you got what you need um, so you can, you know, it's a mutual relation. They get what they want. You get your stuff done to high quality. You get what you want. They get what they want. Back and forth is a negotiation. Last and not least is the evaluation and monitoring. So I found this the hard way with one person on this platform who I thought I trusted really well, um, do some VA and social media work for me. She did the job, but she was doing other people's jobs at the same time. So I'm paying this person above average um, wage, pretty, very decent wage. I did respect what she did, but she was um, doing other people's work. So on Upwork, I used this person 
was um, so on Upwork. This is one of the platforms. I'm not sponsored by them. Maybe they should sponsor me one day because I use them a lot. Uh, this platform called Upwork, and this person I was using to help me with social media stuff. She was really good. Really liked her. We, had, we got on. We worked with her for like at least six months. I was thinking, why is this task taking long? And she gave excuses, taking long because there's this and this. And I'm like, no, it shouldn't really taking that long. And then on Upwork, there is this mechanism where, where you log in, every random, they have random times when they screenshot your, um, your screen on the work you should be doing. And I realized she, she was doing Shopify stuff, trying to sell Shopify courses and doing all this type of stuff. <laughs> which is nothing to do with what the task of what I'm, she said she was contracted to do. And I'm just like, wow. And she found out and she's like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean it. And we had to terminate because I couldn't trust this person because why would that person do that? Like, you know, it's heartbreaking, but this is the name of the game. You have to, I, I literally trusted, like, I was just like, yeah, do the work. I'll get the work on this day, but I should have checked because I was paying her, like, doing the task was, and I was paying extra and extra for extra hours. Actually, she was asking me for extra hours, and I wasn't checking. I was just like, no, I trust that person. Me and her are cool. But people take advantage of you. So you have to, you have to be honest. You have to check the work. You have to check these monitoring um, sources to make sure that people are going to say what they're going to do because they're trying to maximize their input. They're trying to do things doing remotely. I'm not trying to like, oh, you have to time everybody. You have to be like, I don't know, Scrooge or something. Everybody's a Scrooge. What I'm trying to say is you can be taken advantage of if you do not just check sometimes on, you know, on certain mechanisms. If you don't put timelines in, if you don't quality assure your work, if you don't look at how much roughly the time take for a task. But now I know how much time it takes for a task. For me, I make sure I do the task. I make sure I know everything I'm asking for, what can be done. And I make sure, I make sure that no one can't tell me I need extra, extra double hours when something could take a couple of hours to do. So yeah, you, you learn, you, you get burned and you learn. But on a positive note, I've felt like not a lot of people have done done that to me or take advantage i feel also you have to interview people as well i took a lot of time interviewing people to see how they are um this is a bonus one i just came to me because some people might say they want to do the work but some people say that they do digital marketing or they do video editing and you see their work you've got to vouch for their work you got to look look what work they've done or give them a trial because they some people lie <laughs> and i you you weed them out by not just looking at a proposal on Upwork, you, you've ha interviewed them on, on Upwork, there's like a Zoom function. Try to speak to them, talk to them, see where they're at, understand where their experience is. You know, if you want to have a lower paid person, as I said, um, you have to train them, but, but they have to have something. They can't, they can't just come out of like the womb and don't have no experience and something they need to leaks and needs how to use computer. Some people I was interviewing that like, I want to be a virtual assistant, couldn't even use Word or Excel. I was like, that's the basic requirement. And you know, or have access to a computer and a laptop. Some of them don't have that. So those little things you think people you take for granted in the Western world, you have to do your checks, you have to quality issue, you have to monitor, you have to evaluate. I hope this is useful for you to create your teams until you get your first employee, because I want this year to get my first employee. I want to, man, full-time employee. That's what I want to do. That will be the joy. That means I'm moving up in the world. So hopefully you can see me and my ascension to that. So just to have a review, make sure you look at your budget and how much you're going to pay people. Put in the time to train and to create procedures so people can follow do trial projects, small trial projects to test people, to vibe with people, interview them, all that jazz to get them who they are because you're spending your coin, you've got to make sure your coin go further and you vibe with people. Number four, um, just to make sure that you get one or two, up to three people in that same field who can do the job just in case one falls and you know lets you down. 
Number five is to evaluate and monitor the work, what they do, quality assure it, make sure they're doing the work at the same the time, make sure the hours they say they're going to do the work. Don't be mean to them, but just, you know, be frank and, you know, make sure you set your expectations because you don't want to be taken advantage of. I hope this helps. I hope, you know, let me know in the comments. I'm still waiting for this comment life. I'm still waiting for you guys to let me know how things are going in the streets. Remember, the Black Creative Handbook is to help creators and entrepreneurs survive and thrive and speak to you next time peace